not even just about being seen and impactful, but do you care enough about the Holy Spirit's voice to treat that as priority in your life? And many of us think we do, but we really don't. We want the Holy Spirit to align with what we like. You're listening to the Leverage Your Incredible Factor podcast with Danielle Jervy Harmon. The place to be to leverage and scale a business that serves you financially and spiritually. I'm your host, spiritual business growth strategist, Darnielle J. Harmon. Join me each week for inspiring stories, powerful interviews, and business growth strategy to help you experience abundance in your life because of your business. If you are ready to play and pray bigger, let's get this party started. If this is your first time joining me, there's just a few things I want to make sure that you know. Number one, I am not new to this. I am true to this. For more than 10 years, I have been growing businesses, period. I am the absolute best at combining spiritual principles with business growth strategy to turn entrepreneurs into multiple six and seven figure CEOs. And no, in case you were wondering, you do not have to choose. You can love God and make both loads of money. And I'm on a mission to create even more multiple six and seven figure CEOs. Oh, and we don't do hustle and grind. We do spirituality and systems. You might be wondering exactly what the incredible factor is. And if that's you, I invite you to go all the way back to our very first episode. I even give you a really powerful worksheet that you can download so that you can find yours because it is the key to beginning to leverage and scale your business. And I am tickle purple that you are listening in today. This episode is powered by Shatter Your Income Ceiling, my brand new private advanced training that breaks down the framework that my clients and I are using to experience consistent 30K to 100K months in our service-based businesses. Learn more and apply today at workwithdarnielle.com. Baby, OMG, do I have a treat for you in today's episode. In today's episode, I sit down with Marshawn Evans Daniels. Listen to me. This conversation was just it was so God-filled, and Mark Sean is the queen of god confidence. This episode was just phenomenal. She says that every single one of us has to make an eternity impact. Now, and I have to tell you that this may actually be the first time you hear Marshawn really breaking down eternity impact, what it means, how you leverage it, how you step into it, how you sit significantly in it. It's going to change your life forever. There are so many things I could say about Marshawn, but what I really want to say as I, I'm not reading her official bio. This is the bio according to Darnielle. She is powerful. She's prolific. She is anointed and appointed. She is amazing at business reinvention. And more than that, she has an an incredible insatiable heart for God. And I think that's where she and I intersect and connect You may have heard about her because she and her husband, Jack, welcomed three baby girls in the last year. It has been amazing to just watch their journey unfold as their family has expanded. Marshawn and I have a much needed conversation about what it's really going to take, what it's required of us to really, again, to be able to sit in that significance and make an impact that lasts for eternity. There are so many amazing gems that Marshawn shared. I mean, literally, I think I laughed, cried, shouted, ran around my office all at the same time as a result of our conversation. There were so many powerful things she said. She said, when you are focused on the metrics of man, you'll always compromise your true voice. Oh, okay. I don't even want to steal the thunder of how good this interview was, but that was absolutely one of my favorite parts of the interview, but you're going to love it so much more. So I want you to grab pen and paper, clear your heart and your mind, and let's get ready to listen in to my conversation with Marshawn Evans Daniels. Marshawn Evans Daniels. Girl, I am so excited. To welcome you to the Leverage Your Incredible Factor podcast. How are you today? 
Yeah, I'm so glad to be here. Glad to be with you. I know people can't see you in person right now, but you wearing your purple, you got your royalty color on. And I was like, I'm in the right place with the right person at the right time in the right season yeah. to help the right woman think and go to the next level. Yes, yes, yes. So take just a quick moment and tell everybody who you are in your own words. That's always the hardest question. <laughs> So I go by the title of a reinvention strategist, and I specialize in helping women to upgrade their income, their influence, and also their walk with God. And I do that by helping women build wealth through business, mostly speakers and coaches, thought leaders. And I'm really passionate in this season about doing that even more because I'm a new mom of triplet girls gave birth to them at the age of 40 in the middle of a global pandemic. <laughs> and I believe that this is a season for birthing so many things that for many of us, first generation, the opportunity to create wealth, to live in our dreams without limit. And the concept of reinvention is not about getting more stuff or even becoming a new person. It's changing what you do so that you can enter into the promised land that's always been waiting for you. And so my approach, very similar to yours, to business is not just about the stuff accumulation. I believe passionately in the Holy Spirit that that is our secret weapon in every area of life, health, wealth, and spiritually relationships, whatever it is you're looking for, we're probably looking for it in the wrong way. And, you know, it's taken some time to really fully realize that business is as sacred and as important to God as any ministry is. And that's kind of the mission that I am on right now is helping women to really step into who it is that they've always been. Maybe they never knew her, but they sense her. And I believe in order to do that, you have to believe bigger before you can even think about living bolder. <sighs> okay. Can we just drop the mic right there? Okay, guys, <laughs> thanks for coming out. God bless. Good night. That was so good. I am not even writing notes. And normally, Marshawn, I'm writing notes. So I'm going to have to have this transcribed to get all of that goodness that you just <laughs> shared. Because as you were talking, I just immediately got pulled into the God in you. And I think, you know, as our relationship is evolving and developing, that's the thing I love the most is this brazen boldness to call it what it is and that we can't do this thing without God and, and trying to is foolish and opening up a safe space for the, the women that we know, since we both pr work primarily with women to feel comfortable and confident, allowing that part of themselves shine in the work that they do every single day. And so yeah. I'm just grateful for us to be on the journey together, doing this amazing work to help as many people as we possibly can to get it, to understand that it's so much bigger than the dollars that end up in the bank account, right? Oh, way bigger, way bigger. Because um, I was doing a live stream the other day and I shared a concept. A lot of times when I'm, you know, going through a personal, I won't call it a full reinvention, but more like an elevation mentally and spiritually, you start getting these revelations from heaven and you're like, do I share this one yet? Or do I keep this one? Is it ready? Is it not? Is it ready? And I decided this one is something that's been marinating for a few years. And it's this concept of eternity impact. Mm, I like that. I caught that on your Facebook live. I, I was there for a little while. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, you know, we measure metrics in marketing. We want to see how many people did we reach? How many open rates did we have? How many right. likes did we have on the gram? So, you know, in business, you teach what gets measured gets multiplied. And the thing that I'll say two things about this, the thing that invited me into more intentional infusion of faith in business was I did something in 2011. I had just started my company in 2010 and, or this version of my company with coaching. And I started it with an event. The reason I had that at event is that a year prior to that, I had been engaged, ready to get married, had this wedding all planned. Um, and, you know, I felt like I had done all the right things in terms of making the right decision, didn't do drugs, waited to have sex until I was married and I hadn't been married yet. So I'm getting married as a virgin still at almost 30 years old. And I had this really successful sports agency managing NFL and NBA players. And I closed that business down for this relationship 
it felt like a fairy tale dream and I was going to be a bonus mom to his three kids as well. And so I closed this uh, business down. I'm getting ready to get married. It's Monday before a Saturday wedding. And I find out that my fiance is cheating on me. Mm-hmm. And that was such a devastating moment that turned into a devastating season. <laughs> And it was through the rebuilding process that I really discovered how addicted I was to success, first of all, Mm -hmm. um, to achievement and to the identity I had created. And I was having great impact in helping people. And I wouldn't say that I wasn't, I was leading people to Christ. I think that's always been in my DNA of an understanding that when we are successful, it puts us in unique spaces and places for people to see a light that shines through you. Mm -hmm. As I went through this process of healing and asking God, why did this happen? There was something that he whispered the day after the wedding was scheduled to take place. And I say scheduled as opposed to supposed to, because there's many things that we schedule that were never supposed to happen. I'm about to throw my (laughs) shoe at you, Marshawn. I'm just saying, that was so good. (laughs) You're going to hurt your computer and that's how you make money. I'll throw your shoe. I'll throw your shoe. There's many, and, and if I had kept with supposed to happen, that's one of the things that keeps us stuck is that I, he was supposed to be this way. It was supposed to go that way. My job was supposed to this. I was supposed to reach this level. The supposed to creates a spiritual tie to an outcome that was never meant to happen. And we stay stuck in that space. Sometimes, maybe if you're listening, you've been stuck in that space for years, if not decades. And you've seen people around you stuck in that space. And then it invites us to all stay stuck in that space, talking about what was supposed to happen. And then we say we're believers who, if you mean, if you're a believer, it means that you believe in the unfolding of what's never been seen, what's never been done. You trust in the divine timing of God. So it was not supposed to happen. It was something I scheduled to happen. And so I'm leaning up against this luxury vehicle, a BMW that my fiance at the time had purchased for me. I'm on one of the busiest streets in Atlanta and um, in front of what was supposed to be the host hotel, but people came to the, what was not a wedding. It was now a rehearsal dinner turned into a, we love Marshawn dinner because it was six days before everyone had their tickets. Um, They, you know, the wedding dress was paid for the venue all the things. <laughs> mm-hmm. And um, um, and you can get the actual book, Believe Bigger, and it'll kind of um, invite you more into the details of the story and why I'm grateful for Homeland Security because of all the knives that were around when I met him at the airport. But that's a whole nother story. You got to read the book. That's another podcast episode. <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> Forgiveness is a whole nother story. <laughs> but um, so I asked God, why did this happen to me? Mm-hmm. Why did this happen to me? It wasn't a woe is me. It was like, God, you know, you know me and I know you. I've been walking with you since I was a baby. Like I have, I have tried to do all the things. And I also know though that my life is not my own. Mm -hmm. And so this is way too dramatic for it to just be infidelity to there's something so much deeper. And um, as I'm leaning up against the car that he purchased for me that now I can't afford because I've closed my entire business down. I didn't have a plan B. My, I went all the way in plan A from love in terms of the relationship and being a mother. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm asking God with the most level of sincerity, like, God, I need to hear you right now. I don't care about all the people around. And everything got quiet and in a small, still voice. He said, you're going to be able to change the lives of women like never before. Mm-hmm. And I was like, couldn't you have sent me a memo? <laughs> no, he couldn't. And the second thought was, I don't like women. <laughs> a woman just told me she was sleeping with my fiance. Mm-hmm. And I represent NFL NBA players. I was the woman who used to say, I get along well with the guys, just better. Just that I was just, that just seemed more normal to me. It was better for my mentors were all male, all the all those reasons why we fall into that headspace. And so as I went through this reinvention process through of healing, looking for spiritual leadership, but then our counseling, I should say, or mentorship, really, I got professional counseling, therapy, therapy, uh-huh. therapy, therapy. I was in, the, in there like sometimes two days a week in the beginning. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know how I'm here. I was dealing with depression. I'm supposed to be a motivational speaker. I'm still getting called by ESPN a few days later to go on Sports Center to talk about Tiger Woods cheating on his wife. And I'm like, how can I hold this whole world of myself together? And I realized I couldn't. 
Right. I just couldn't do that. And so the best thing I ever did was ask for help, but I still kept holding on to this thing. What is God talking about change the lives of women like never before? Haven't you seen what I've already done, God? Haven't I already been the daughter that you wanted? Haven't you seen, hey, I was on The Apprentice. I've been in Miss America. I went to Georgetown for law school. I got all the scholarships. I got $200,000 in scholarships. I, you know, been an overachiever since, 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 since a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And what do you mean change the lives of women like never before? What I took away was an invitation, but first seemed like condemnation. And that's just how my mind took it at first. It was a promise. So there's this mixed thing. Sometimes when God speaks to us, it's sweet and sour at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's like you have something for me, but wait, you're trying to tell me I'm not ready then. Right. You're telling me that there's something about me that means I'm not ready. That you said never change. You'll be able to change the lives of women like never before. Oh, I need some work but don't you see my resume Mm -hmm. that you helped me build God? This is the work that you need. Your resume can't give you that work. Like it's, I I don't know. I think, you know, but I'm not a hundred percent sure that, you know, like I was three months away from my wedding when my first Mm -hmm. fiance confessed Mm -hmm. that he had gotten, and it was an older woman in our church pregnant. And similarly, yeah. In our, in our church. And um, similarly, the bottom fell out of my life. Like, and I, the one question I didn't ask is how, how could this happen to me? Because I knew how it happened to me because it was me turning away from God and his protection and provision, which opened up the door for this to happen. But I still love God and his salvation because salvation is snatching you out of harm's way. And sometimes to get your attention, he has to do the thing that you don't want him to do, because if he doesn't do it, you'll find yourself going down a path that you shouldn't have been going down in the first place. And so that was probably the the slight difference in my story, but it didn't make make the depression any harder. This this do thing, this thing around, um, because I feel like a lot of us who've been through rough circumstances in relationships, or somehow we feel like we made a a decision and we, we say God had to do that. The way I look at this is um, God may not do something, but he may allow something right. for the sake, right? Like if Jesus came riding in on a donkey, there will be a double S's that will ride their way in and in our lives. And we're supposed to actually ride that into, that's how he went to Calvary. Right, right, right. So if the person who told me thought, you know, the enemy whispers, go do this, Right. I received the result of that whisper, Mm -hmm. which was actually a donkey delivering a message of freedom. Right. Understand? So, but the thing, the other thing is, um, I have gotten to a point where I'm like, you know what, God, you did tell me there were signs. I didn't have eyes to see them. And it wasn't that you did this. I made the choice. I made this choice. And I didn't have 100% peace, but I wasn't mature enough yet because I just didn't have enough experience. Right. And so many, you know, when things happen, then other people are like, well, I saw it the whole time or I never liked him. I'm like, mm-hmm, nope, you didn't. <laughs> and even if you did, I couldn't have heard because it right. wasn't, I wasn't in a place to be able to hear and I wasn't supposed to be able to hear. Right. And really that's, exactly. And that's why, like, for me, I wasn't, I didn't ask that question because I, the signs were there all along. I knew full well what I was doing and I chose a different route and, but God loved me so much that he was not going to allow me to ruin my life. And so he created a dramatic situation that I wouldn't be able to say, okay, let's still do this. Yeah. Because he loved me. Don't turn the attached to your destiny, yeah. but don't don't be addicted to drama. Right. There's a, there's a difference when you create the drama. And that's why I went through counseling is like, I know that this is not supposed to be my story. And right. this is not supposed to be a recurring legacy for me. Because right. there are people who this is part of their heritage. When I dug a little deeper, because I'm a lawyer, I, I'm trusting, but the only reason I didn't pay attention was because of love. But once I was a little, little woke, mm-hmm. of all the things I found out. And, um, but here's, here's the biggest thing when I'm, we're, the reason I kind of went down this backstory was this whole thing of eternity impact. Mm-hmm. If we're talking about being able to see the signs and we've had great discernment and God's saying there's something more, that means there's a different dimension of discernment that you have not yet experienced. You haven't understood this higher level of God's voice. And sometimes you have to feel the fire a bit to understand that there's a difference between a burning bush and then just a straight up fire. 
Right. Like one will burn you. <laughs> right. One will change your countenance with God. And that's where God is calling us into this discernment where we have both the ability to see in a way that makes us more curious. So when God said, you're going to change the lives of women like never before, it was sweet and sour, but it had me curious. And I didn't know what God meant, but I knew he meant it. And it wasn't like the next day. And I think this is very important. I didn't wake up and say, I'm going to go change the lives of women like right now. Right. And so many of us rush through a traumatic season when we're basically still in the middle of hurt, pain, and we jump in trying to be the rescuer to other people when the Holy Spirit, God, even just basic um, physical and mental renewal hasn't even taken place yet. And so all you're doing is putting, as my husband would say, a bandage over a bullet wound. Mm -hmm. And then you're actually bleeding on other people, creating an act. So you don't have to be perfect, but I do believe in being released before you jump into a story, if you will. I so think that is so good. Yeah. It's and important. I just want to interject really quickly yeah. because I want to make sure that people heard that, right? Mm -hmm. You need to be released before you jump into the next thing. And some people aren't waiting for the release. And then you're trying to figure out why things aren't moving. Like the promise yeah. is still the promise. And while you can't not get the promise, you can delay the promise because you're not yet ready for the promise. And people think that just because there's a promise, they're going to wake up tomorrow and the promise is going to be here. But the process still has to happen in order for you to experience the promise. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this um, the thing about wanting to enter into your promised land, if you will, is that if you don't, that God won't let you bring your Egypt self into your promised land. Right. And so one of the things in the book, Believe Bigger, which is different, I know we'll probably get to the devotional 100 days of believing bigger. But in the book, Believe Bigger, I walk women through the five stages of divine reinvention. Um, I discovered this um, as I was working with others to the first thing I did is I just held a, a business seminar. I did it because some white guys had it. <laughs> I didn't know what a sales page was. I didn't know um, what a shopping cart was. I was a professional speaker and um, it was through the reinvention, not just spiritually, but also like, okay, uh, the mortgage company does not care that I'm on a spiritual journey with God to find myself. I need to pay these bills. I need to figure income. Mm -hmm. So I noticed people were picking my brain, asking me, how did I get on television? How did I get paid speaking engagements? Um, how did I get big clients like Rolls Royce and Tiffany and company and Nike? How did I sign the highest paid defensive end in the NFL who just signed a $62 million seven year deal with the saints? How was that my first client? How did I speak at Nike on branding? And so I took all these how to's and even how to, how did I get my first book published uh, with Wiley when I was 28 years old, um, the largest business book publisher in the world. And I said, you know, I'm going to take all these how to's. I'm just going to stop settling for a cup of coffee because I don't drink coffee at Starbucks. Like I'm going <laughs> to stop settling and I'll just hold a seminar. And let me just also say the motivation behind this was not about pursuing purpose. And it was, it had nothing to do with the whisper that I heard that day on the street, the day after the wedding was scheduled to take place. It was literally, I need to pay my bills. And I saw some guys that I said, I've done more than they have. And they're charging what? So I charged $1,497 for my first seminar. I got, I pitched my uh, a corporation that I had been um, in touch with that they hadn't picked up any of my projects yet. And I remember the date, it was 18, um, August the 13th, 2010, <laughs> where they signed off. I took that seed money that called the sponsorship, paid for the hotel at the W Hotel. And on November 20th and 21st, 2010, I had a two-day seminar called Me University, the Ultimate Business and Branding Bootcamp. Mm -hmm. And I had 35 people who attended. I thought I was going to have closer to like 50 or 60. And it was just the right amount of people for me to figure out what I was doing. And I didn't know that I basically in that two day seminar created the content that would take my business for the next five years. Yeah. And have to keep create. I like, I didn't really know what I already had inside of me. Mm -hmm. And so that was one year after I had called my wedding off and I heard this whisper, I was trying to plan something else, this big women's conference. Mm -hmm. And I did this just to fill the space so that I could make a little bit of money, not trying to pursue this master life purpose and mission right. of change. Just money. And I think it's an important thing sometimes to realize how the path into your mission and assignment happens. It doesn't always happen when you're rushing into it. I focused on healing. I focused on dating myself. I focused on finding a new rhythm and being still. And that was hard. 
Mm-hmm. That was hard. So when I did come up for air, I was like, let me try to make some money. I wasn't hyper spiritualizing it. And I think that's why it had the right foundation to begin with. And also why it's been successful is that believers need to see other believers who are not just successful in their belief, but also in what they've built. Absolutely. Yep. I agree. I remember I got a prophetic word in 2013. I was doing an event in Reston and this woman who had registered the day before the event started walks into the room. Can't hear me. Is the, is my um, gardener? Can you hear that? Okay. Sorry. Um, No, that's okay. Um, The third, I can't remember what day of the event was, but she walks in the room and she's like, I don't have a business. I don't even know why I'm here, but the Lord gave me a word for you this morning. And what he said is basically around what you just said is that you have the results and the influence for believers to know exactly that this can work for them. I think it's the biggest dichotomy that people allege that they love God, they're connected to God, them and God are like this, but then they operate from a space of fear. Like, I don't, I don't get it because I don't think that there's, if you're truly in connection and you see yourself the way God sees you, how can there be fear? I don't, I don't get it. So anyway, um, and so she walked in. We call it discernment. We hyper spiritualize it. We call it discernment, which also earlier when you said, you know, the whole thing of being released to share your journey and your story, there's there's a balance of that because there's being released, and then there's some people who you've been released, but you're still sitting. <laughs> And that's why it's important to have an understanding and respect for the Holy Spirit, because everything about God is about timing. Um, In 100 Days of Believing Bigger, the first section is on trust. And the first day gives an acronym that came to me when I was in college over 20 years ago, uh, which is hard to believe that it's over 20 years ago, but it's a thing now. Um, It's T-R-U-S-T, which is Total Reliance Upon Spiritual Timing. And when we move in those windows, I call them like these portals of opportunity that's an invitation versus when we just wait, we're taking grace for granted. Mm-hmm. We're assuming that there will be another, not just another opportunity. There might be another opportunity, but it may not be tied to eternity the same way. Mm-hmm. It may not be like there's, when God moves us, he's doing it because there's some, there's a whole web and network of things we can't see in the unseen realm as to why things are needed. And we've all experienced where we just changed lines in the grocery store and somehow we ministered or talked to someone or were able to help pay the balance of somebody's um, um, bill at when they're checking out mm-hmm. or something happened. And if we under, like, if you're grateful that you moved lanes in your car, when something, if you had just been in that lane, it would have been an accident. Why would we not move into anything that the Holy Spirit asks us to do. Why, now he's like, well, you see, I have a whole laundry list of things that he's given me before myself. So let me just confess, this is not my, um, I wouldn't say I'm a master at moving with the Holy Spirit, but I will say that I reverence the Holy Spirit and I don't want to get it wrong. Right. I want to move before my life gets split rocked, which is another concept in Big Believe Bigger, where the reason I believe that the engagement falling apart and the marriage and all of that so quickly was so necessary and dramatic at the same time is because it really woke me up to a point. It's like, uh, there's a scripture. I can't actually remember where it is. And it says it's now, it's like, it basically talks about us um, awakening from our slumber. Mm -hmm. And when you're successful, when you're climbing the corporate ladder, when you're mommying, when you're doing all the things, you don't even realize you're sleeping. Yeah. And so these things come in, it disrupts us to awaken us to something greater, something more. And the Holy Spirit is always trying to get your attention. But when he has your attention, if you say, I need to go and pray about it, the disciples did not have that opportunity. They did not have that chance and they did not demonstrate that behavior. And so it's something that we have been ingrained from a religiosity standpoint to wait and wait and wait and calling it discernment when what it really is is self-sabotage it's fear, yeah. it's toxic thinking, and it is um, operating in the prism, not prison, but prism of smallness that's become normalized. Yeah, I agree. And I, I mean, I constantly, I'm just like scratching my head. Everywhere I go, for probably everywhere I went for maybe two years, I would do this survey. I'm like, okay, how many of you would say you and God are like this? On a scale from one to 10, you're in a seven to 10, your relationship with God. Every hand in the room. I even have a video of this. Then the follow-up question is say, same scale, one to 10, how many of you would say your confidence is between seven and 10? Almost every hand would go down. Mm-hmm. 
you're in connection with God, but you're not confident. How does that work? And it's exactly the way I've never heard it put the way that you just said it, but it's exactly what you said. We are, we're so uh, religiously deep that we're not practically understanding that we're not living the principles and God is principled. And the reason why timing is so important is because it, or we get out of timing when we cease to follow the principles. He's never going to step outside of the principles that he's already established, which I think um, is so important. And it's part of the reason why I love the way you broke down a hundred days of believing bigger, which is based on your best selling the bomb.com believe bigger that book. I mean, I just, I think I read and was like, <laughs> my mouth was open like almost the whole time. Cause I know there's so many parallels between your story and my story even. I think that's um, how we got connected was through the, when the book came out. Yeah, that's how we really got connected. We had met previously, but like that was our time, you know, like, oh my gosh, I love her. I didn't know all these things about her. You know what I mean? And I, I thank you, even in, in the way that you've chosen, I want you to talk a little bit about that before we go dig into the um, devotional a little bit more because you said it before we got started and it was around being tuned into the voice of God and knowing when is the time for you to do the things that you do and so and that's one of the things I admire and uh, and respect about you as a person who is as well known and as visible on social media who doesn't let the platform overtake what the spirit is telling you to do I don't see that very often where I see people put their whole life on display. Um, but I love the, the, the discernment. I'm going to use the word discernment, but I love the discernment with which you determine when you're going to share what you're going to share and you're not going to operate outside of the Kairos of God. I love that. And I would love it if you would just talk a little bit about that, because I think that that is also has something to do with this eternity impact yeah. and, 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 how do we get to the point where we are so, so into God and therefore so into his voice that we don't miss his timing and we don't let what happened initially where you were just doing the event just to make money, yeah. usurp your ability to be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be it. Yeah. Well, there's a few things. I think first is understanding the voice of God and I'll use them as three different concepts, you know, well, three different persons that are the same with God, the Holy Spirit and Christ, right? So I look at each of them as individually and, co and intri intricately necessary, but also there's a different person in each or three persons in one. So God is father and protector, Lord is savior, Holy Spirit is guider and counselor. Mm -hmm. And um, Christ shows us what life is supposed to look like, right? And shows us what it looks like to bring others on a mission with you, but having to be the message before you can recruit other people to be a part of the message. Yeah. Um, God is protector and provider, creator, author, finisher, um, and shows how that looks through Christ, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that the thing about that should give us confidence, or I would say Godfidence, um, is understanding that, you know, if we believe that Christ died and rose again, and we're also believing in Genesis where God says that we're made in his image, right? So that means there, that same resurrection power, and this is the promise that Christ says that you will do greater works than these in my name, greater works than these. Mm -hmm. Like how much greater? Here's the question of eternity impact, and here's where it comes back to the Holy Spirit part in God's voice, is if he says greater works than these shall you do in my name. We're created in God's image. That means that same resurrection power operates in us. But what are we actually resurrecting? Like the thing that troubled me and the reason, because I have this, this thing where I take like 40 minutes like we've taken to actually answer the first question you asked. <laughs> I did this, this teleseminar in 2011 and it was called the Focus Me Challenge. It was basically a seven day Bible study. I had just had my first event in November. In December, God saying, do, I don't even know how to use a conference line. I had to call my good girlfriend, Valerie Burton. And I asked her, how do you use a conference line? Cause I had, she's, she's uh, seven years older than me. We met in Miss Texas in 1997, both, both competing together. So I was like, Valerie, how do I use a conference line? Uh, my assistant at the time is like, we're going to need a larger line. I was like, 
it holds a hundred people, a hundred people aren't going to show up to listen to me talk about the Bible. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that week I'm leading and thousands of people show up. Um, first time I've ever done anything like this, but one of my friend's husbands who I'd been friends with as well, I mean, they, they weren't, they weren't married then actually, but um, dating. He said, you know, she's loved this series you've been doing. I didn't know you had a faith component. And it stood, stood out to me like, wait a minute, faith is not a component. It's not a piece. It's always been the secret sauce. When I was c- growing up competing as a competitive baton twirler, uh, I had, you know, I'm praying for one, three, which means Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't hyper spiritualize, but it's always been about being like, I want to be the quarterback in God's football team, not army, whatever you want to call it. I want to be, I want, I want God to know you can give me the ball. It enlightened me and it invited me when he said a component. I was like, no, 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 no. This is not a component because I care about eternity. And so the, the, with the Holy spirit, you know, I think sometimes when we say it as God's voice, as opposed to recognizing this is a specific counselor with an assignment to guide you into your destiny. It's a specific and it is a navigation system. It's a compass and you know, God's voice. So sometimes it sounds very pretty and it's like, well, I I'm going to move when, you know, I have confirmation from the Lord. And um, that is sometimes I think the reason why we miss the invitations to step. So when it comes to like sharing and teaching, and for those of you who lead other women or lead movements, lead companies, if you are addicted and driven by the metrics of man, you always compromise your true voice, not just the sound of what you have, but the voice of who you are that naturally calls other people into a higher level and dimension of destiny. And you're not even trying because you can't actually get somebody saved. You can't actually um, deliver somebody from their current circumstance, whether that is struggling in their business and their finances and their mind and their relationships and their body. You can't actually do that. That takes resurrection power. Now, there are other people who do that without the Holy Spirit, and I call that a helpful spirit. There are people who have helpful spirits. Now, you can be very helpful, but will you have an eternity impact unless you have the DNA of the Holy Spirit flowing through what it is that you do? Now, I say this as someone who speaks at Toyota, Ford, Morgan Stanley, Ernst & Young, Nike. I don't have to actually try. I just have to be. I have to be, and I have to have an appreciation. So there will be times when I'm talking and I'm on a stage, corporate audience, and do I use the version where I led someone to Christ on this stage, or do I share the version of impact where maybe I don't tell that actual version? I'm listening in real time because I got a few different ways I can go with it. And I've never, ever once been uninvited back. Right. Yeah. And I know how not to to preach and do all of that. But, you know, this whole, it takes also, I think oh, the other thing is, it takes practice being outside of an environment with just Christians. Like there's yes. nothing that's going to develop you, even if you just create, I don't think everyone should create a business for women of faith, even if you're a woman of faith. That's a right. specific assignment. For most right. women, Absolutely. I think it's a desire and not an assignment. Right. Because you feel more comfortable talking to people who believe like you. I became, I believe, skilled in what I do by working with men, women, corporations, NFL, NBA players, uh, media outlets, publishers in the mass market to bring that back to believers. But if I had just talked to believers, first of all, I would still be charging $3 and 99 cents for my, my products. Right. (laughs) You know, so the Holy spirit is a guide. The Holy spirit is a counselor. The Holy spirit is a director. And I think if you begin to look at them as not just interchangeable voices, but each intentional, there's a reason. Otherwise God God could have said, it's just going to be me. I don't need to send my son. I don't need to give you the gift of the Holy spirit. So I think it's important for us to start to look at them a little bit differently and that we have the right reverence that's necessary. Cause the last thing I'll say, I remember one time I was doing a preview event. And for those of you in marketing preview event is what you do to launch a product, a course. And I think I was launching an actual live event. And so I did this, um, I still use the telephone. I don't do webinars. Maybe I'll catch up. It's 2020 beyond, but I could, I do well with just my voice and a phone. 
And I remember getting ready to get to do this seminar. I was by the pool at my townhouse and listening. And I really felt God saying, I told some of my girlfriends that are like prayer coverers for me. And I said, I think I'm going to open up an altar call on the phone tonight. And I'm supposed to be making an offer for a $1,497 seminar. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And um, I said, if that's what you, it was so heavy in my heart. And as I went through it, that heaviness went away. And he's like, you don't have to. And at the end, I was like, God, why did you have that? He goes, I wanted to know you would. Yeah. Wanted to know you would. And so that is the listening of the Holy Spirit. And it's kind of like, how much do you really care? Not just about yourself, not even just about being seen and impactful, but do you care enough about the Holy Spirit's voice to treat that as priority in your life? And many of us think we do, but we really don't. We want the Holy Spirit to align with what we like. And that, I mean, I think that's such a good point. I remember years ago, it was 2009 and I was doing my first event and I had, I mean, those are probably my super saint days. Like if you you push a little button and I would, you know, tell you all of the colloquial things that Christians say. And I remember having an event planner at the time who was, I don't know, either agnostic or atheist, who knew. But anyway, she was really offended by all of the scripture and everything that was everywhere. And so I went into praying and fasting because I know, you know, I'm like, okay, what do you want? What do you want me to do, God? And I clearly heard the spirit say, people need to feel me, but not everybody's ready to see me. And I had corporate people coming. I had some sponsors coming Mm -hmm. that for me to preach a sermon wouldn't have been the appropriate thing to do. Right. And, and I took that and I I held it like, okay, guys, so how do I make sure that they feel you? And while I never preached the sermon, I never referenced the scripture, the spirit, the energy that was in that place had some of my executive vice president, president sponsors come to me afterwards and say, Mm -hmm. whatever it was that you did here, can you come do that in my organization? And so I, I love I love the analogy of how we need to look at God, the Spirit, and um, and Christ, and making sure that we can hear and we know the role of each, and we're not so super deep and spiritual that we miss what God is speaking. I'm just like you, Marshawn, real time. I'm listening. I'm, you know, like I prepare to a certain extent, but I don't over process because I need to give God the ability to do what it is he wants to do in that space. Like I'm doing an event next week. I'm um, making up my, uh, my event that was supposed to happen earlier in the year. And I told my enrollment team that I'm not setting a goal. Mm. And they were like, what? I said, no, I'm going to fully rely on God. I'm going to do, I'm going to serve and I'm going to leave the results up to him. This is the first time I've ever done this because we down to the T crunch the numbers of the number of buying units. And what did you say earlier? If you're focused on the metrics of man, you'll always compromise your true voice. That yeah. Sounds, I got to write that down. That yeah, that's what you say. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you said, girl. You was in flow. <laughs> but I, but as I, I'm on, I'm praying and fasting right now, as I always do before I'm going to go forth and lead to make sure that it is not Darnell who shows up, but it is the vessel that God sent who shows up. And, and God was like, don't set a goal. Mm. Hmm. You, you don't need to set a goal. I got you. Don't, I know it. Me up. <laughs> don't set a goal. Don't set a goal. Man, don't set a goal. He got, he got us. Like, I mean, okay. So is that not believing bigger? Like, I mean, come on, because. Well, do they be using your words against you? <laughs> for you it is a tough thing when you it's are a tough thing. When you're a business person you're a business person and you think in terms of um you have staff you have team right. responsible right and um but some of the best things happen when you don't have the goal mm-hmm. I had zero expectations for this devotional 100 days of believing bigger in terms of results because and being a new mom um, when this book came out my girls were just hitting around the five month year old part five months old. And, um, when my publisher reached out, they're like, we haven't wanted to bother you because we know you had these babies, but we, what do you think? Can we do anything? And they were very, I mean, these people at day spring, they really love God. Like I've worked with, this has been the best business experience I've ever had. Most of my professional Christian business experiences, meaning when I've worked with Christian gatekeepers have been horrible and borderline PTSD traumatizing. Mm Mm-hmm. And they have gathered and rallied behind me in a way that is faith renewing. And they said, 
we are trusting God to do this. And whatever you give, this thing has sold out in less than two weeks. That is around awesome. the world. It sold more. They, they printed what would be usually enough for a year's worth of books and it sold out in less than 14 days. And so I'm hearing and with, it's great what you're saying because it's even reminding me when you say no goals, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, it just invites the breath, the kiss of the Holy spirit yeah. in there. I think there's also seasons for that. I yeah. think if you had a no goals, you know, I had goals for my first event and I didn't reach them and I was a little disappointed, but I was glad that it worked out the way it did. Mm -hmm. And then in the, the things where I just, you know, or maybe I set my goals too low and God's like, whoa, I got so much more. Right. And, then, and this is another thing of discernment. <laughs> uh, are you, some, some people will hear what you just said about setting no goals and they're like, that's right. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna right. let the whole thing do it. But you, the difference is the foundation that you've built. So it's like the woman with the jars of oil. Mm -hmm. I love this second king story. Come through. Go ahead. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> the woman with the jars of oil. She created a space for not the prophet Elijah, but for the Holy Spirit to flow yes. into. Yes. And so people will come to me and they'll be like, oh, I want to do this and this. And they'll talk to me about their anointing and the dream that God had and the, whole, and the prophecy. And we make the prophecy an idol, all those right. things. Their story. I was like, nobody, don't take this the wrong way, but nobody cares about your story. Nobody cares about your anoint. And you can get so drunk on all of those things. Mm -hmm. And that's not the thing that shifted. She was even trying to tell her story. And the prophet was like, what do you have in your house? Didn't even right. cut it all off. Right. Cut, cut it off. This is where I first got released to just cut people off. It's not rude. They're starting to create, use their, their words towards death words. Yeah, they're creating casual covenants is what they're doing. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> covenants attribution darn you because <laughs> y'all be taking people's words as your own it's important if we're going to grow each other as women we've got to credit other women Absolutely. If your words are your wealth so the woman has this jar she is well she doesn't even know she has it until someone with eyes to see in the realm of plenty provision and abundance says what do you have? He already knew she had something. He may not have known exactly what, but I'm sure I felt like the Holy Spirit, because I've now had these moments hundreds, if not thousands of times where I'm like, well, what do you have here? And they're like, eh, da, 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 not much, just this, da, da. he says, I want you to go take what you have, gather all that you have. And then she does. And the, the oil keeps flowing, right? right? The difference in what you're saying around set no goals is she didn't know, she didn't have a goal for that oil, but she had the jar. Mm -hmm. Many don't have the jars out. Right. Or if you think you have jars, you have imitation versions of jars. You have things that you've put out, but you didn't put out what was required. He exactly. was very specific. So here's another way that this shows up. I don't know if they're going to be ready for this one. Well, here's I'm ready. Another, here's another way that this shows up is where you're putting out like these faux jars that you've painted or that you, you feel comfortable with. And I'm not even, it didn't have to be pretty. It just has to be what's required because oftentimes making an investment in yourself is an example of the jar. Yeah. You don't want to make it because it's too much. It's a stretch. It, it surely couldn't be God speaking that. Right. And I have gotten to a point where I know I might be more passionate about somebody else's success and their breakthrough than them, but I cannot be attached to it mm -hmm. because it used to make me question my calling because other people were stuck on the jar that they put out. They said, no, 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 I want you to fill this jar my way. I want you, because I told myself in 2010, when I did that first event, I said, I want to be the Rolls Royce of coaching. Mm -hmm. I want to operate at the highest of high levels. Why do I have to start at the bottom? Who made up that crap? And why do we believe it? So you want me to take what I've learned and become and even you want to also use God as an excuse for why I should now come down into your fake jar, mm -hmm. the jar you made for yourself in this smaller place that isn't even capable, quite frankly, of containing what it is I have to give, much less what heaven wants you to experience. You can't even contain it. And so there was a discernment that the prophet had around the jar that was needed. Now, if you are the type of person who is placing all these rules about what things have to look like before you do something or what things have to look like. 
all you're saying is, and then you say, but you know what? I'm just going to let God handle it. I'm going to put it in God's hands. What you're doing is you're putting out fake jars. There's actually, and some of you have no jar right. and you're not, you will know what the jar needs to be based off of what the opportunity requires. And the question is, will you go back and look at what you do have to create it? Will you do that? Most people won't. And so stop asking for more. Stop putting yourself through torture of praying for more when you want God to come down into your space of less. He will always invite us up. He's too big for that small place. And you know what I'm talking about. I do. I think about, I, I've probably I been. You, you, you. I mean, no, you, I, know, I know, I know. Um, I, I love the movie, movie Facing the Giants. Have you seen that movie? Have you seen Facing the Giants? No. Okay, I'm going to send you a copy of Facing the Giants. I love this movie and the girls will love it, okay? So there's a couple of scenes in the movie that I really love, but just on this point you just made. So Coach Taylor is the coach of this Bad News Bears football team. He wants to be great, but he's not great. And the, the people, the, the uh, parents, they want him gone. And he's, his, his confidence is low and he's just unclear, unsure. There's this man, Mr. Bridges, who comes in every day or every week and prays for the children, touches and agrees with every locker and he's speaking over him. One morning, he walks into Coach Taylor's office and he says, Coach Taylor, God is not through with you yet. There's still an open door here and you are to bloom where you are planted. He leaves. Coach Taylor jumps up, goes after him. He's like, do you really believe God told you to tell me that? Mr. Bridges says, yes. Coach Taylor says, I will admit to you that I'm struggling but I'm also praying, but I just don't see God at work. Mr. Bridges says, heard a story once about two farmers. They were both praying for rain, but only one of them went out and prepared their fields for it. Which one do you think was ready when God sent the rain? God will send the rain whenever he is ready. You got to prepare your field. So this story about the lady with the jars in second Kings is about preparing your field. She did what the prophet told her to do fully expecting that the provision would be made because she did it. And she did it not with full faith. She yeah. did it with just a little teeny, weeny, weeny bit of faith. Absolutely. And so what we have to become, realize, we have, what we have to realize is that our responsibility is to prepare our field. And so I've done everything that I know and need to do that I've been instructed to do. I've got to trust that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. And if I'm truly surrendered, which is the story of my life these days, that I'm a surrendered vessel and I'm not trying to do it Darnell's way, I'm trying to do it God's way, then I have to trust that because I've done my prep work, when he comes through with the provision, the provision will do exactly, it'll exceed, it'll be Ephesians 3 and 20, which I know mm -hmm. is a scripture that is um, a big part of Believe Bigger. It will be exceedingly and abundantly above all I could ever think of, ask, or imagine. According mm -hmm. to that power that is at work within me, that's been at work within me since before I was formed in my mother's womb, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think we all have to learn how to tap into that voice, how to get courage enough to consider bigger so that we can then believe bigger so that we can watch God do the big things that he's always wanted to do, Marsha. Like he's always wanted to do the, he all, he knew before the book even came out that he was going to do this because of everything that's happened from 2010 forward in your life up until this point that you opened yourself up to be a jar, to be a vessel of what it looks like to, to completely surrender to God and allow all that he is to be demonstrated to man through you, your life's work. Yeah. I mean, I have chills right now and yeah. we haven't even really, really talked about Believe Bigger, but I want you, before we go, um, I think probably for me, the thing that I love the most is the, the 10 themes that mm -hmm. are throughout. So if you can maybe talk a little bit about that and why, why doing a devotional to the book was a part of this journey for the women's lives that you were born to impact? Hmm. Well, so with Believe Bigger, the book, the reason I wrote it and I, you know, I had just had an event where we made almost $2 million in an hour. And before that event, God said, it's going to be your last one. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this can't be you, God. And I knew it had to be you because you would be the only one telling me not to go forward. When I finally have the team in place, I finally know what I'm doing. We are 
in a momentum. You know, our events are like a thousand dollars or three thousand to attend. We've got like five hundred people in the room. Like they're doing really well. And I had this this vision of what I what we were going to launch another event in the fall to double the spring revenue, all the things. And he says, "This is your last one." Now, when I said this, people thought. Oh, it's just a marketing strategy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't play when I say God says, because I know how much people have been spiritually abused by people who use right. that phrase. So I really try to be very cognizant. And I've learned I can't control what people are going to think, but I do want to operate from a place of as much integrity as I can as a human vessel. Absolutely. They don't get it right every time. But um, then... I, he, I was like, I thought it was going to take three months off and it turned into three years. I feel like it's really still been five years. I feel like I've still been sitting somewhat on the sidelines for the last five years of watching some of the soil that we mentored people through watching their businesses grow. And I think when I look back um, at when I rebranded from me university to the Godfidence business school and um, seeing the big the year we rebranded to Godfidence was the year we made a million dollars in the first quarter of the year mm -hmm. across the million dollar mark. And then that next year, it was like in an hour that was almost double. Mm -hmm. And um, then he's saying, stop. <laughs> he did that to me too, by the way. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so he says, stop. And I was like, hmm. And I didn't realize I wasn't as healthy as I thought I was. So I'm having this interesting experience where I'm seeing people that we helped mentor succeed. I'm seeing this other um, new voices come up, technology is changing, but I'm still like, this is not your season. I was able to, um, uh, I found out that I had fibroids. I needed to work on my health and my eating. And I didn't know I wasn't as well as I thought I was because I'm slender and it, there was no signs, mm -hmm. but that's another story just about the Holy Spirit. Um, I, I want to connect you with a woman named Jessie Thompson. I don't know if you know Jessie, but she's really was such a key part of my health journey um, in 2016. And it's so important for us as women, particularly women of color, to really understand our reproductive health and how a lot of things, whether it's us getting those perms when we were in the, in the 80s and the 90s and the food that we eat and just having opportunity to recalibrate our body. Anyway, um, the... Um, the thing that, that this wait period showed me was just how important it is for us to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So I wrote Believe Bigger, the book, because people would look at and see these zeros, the million dollars stuff, and say, oh, I want that. But you don't know what it took to get that. Mm -hmm. You don't, I believe in the eternity impact in everything, not just you know, your, your, got your Bible self and your Christian self, and then your other self, but right. in everything. And so as Believe Bigger was released, traveled around the country, teaching about the purpose map in there, the voice of little me and future me, these competing forces, how do we step into who we really are? What's the difference between purpose and assignment? These words are kind of um, mixed together, not taught really well. Um, I, also had my mom, she was kind of, my mom was dealing with some surgeries and a lot of people don't know that while I was on the road, when I, I was on the road almost every week. And when I wasn't, I was at home with her, helping her to recover. So I never fully got to really really like be teach, believe bigger outside of doing keynotes for corporations. Mm -hmm. And so when I had the opportunity to do something else, when Dayspring approached me about doing a devotional, um, they it awakened something in me because I'm like, I do devotionals every week in my newsletter. I don't do business tips. I never have. It doesn't flow out of me. And um, so I have I did, I wrote this because, you know. Believing bigger is all about really embracing disruption and 2020 has bulldozed all of our doorsteps in ways that we could have never imagined <laughs> and it's probably happened in other seasons of your life, even before this year. And the goal with 100 Days of Believing Bigger is not that you would just have a great next year. My vision for this is more of a decade view of looking at in the year 2030, what will you be grateful that you committed in 2020 in terms of your spiritual recalibration? I believe this is so that you would finish this year or this season bold, because whether you're finishing 2020, beginning 2021, whenever you hear this, don't worry about the start date because God starts when you do. 
but that you would finish this 100 days bold. What is not necessary for your promised land, your next step for you to go higher, deeper, wider, and more forward in your, your destiny is not clarity, it's courage. It's not clarity. And this devotional is not designed to give you clarity. It's designed to teach you who you really are, how you were really made, why God needs you for such a time as this and where he's leading you to leave next. It's a lot about identity. So it's broken into 10 different themes from trust, purpose, identity, disruption, belief in faith, significance, courage, and a few more. And it's broken into four parts where you can do this in less than 10 minutes a day. The first, it starts out with a title and a scripture, one scripture a day, not a whole bunch. You don't eat an elephant. We're just marinating on one. Because I felt like a lot of devotionals just throw a bunch of scriptures at you. So it's one scripture a day. Then there's a lesson of the day. It goes then into um, a journal prompt. And then finally, a believe bigger prayer, which is different than just a regular traditional prayer, in my view. My goal was for us to recalibrate our spirit, even in how we pray. Mm -hmm. um, praying more as if, as opposed to what if. Because most of us don't realize we pray beggar prayers and really pity prayers and help me prayers, as opposed to really engaging the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. My vision was that we would recalibrate ourselves by going deeper into the Holy Spirit. And then let's just see what happens if you give God 100 days of your devotion. 100 days of consistency, 100 days even of community. Because I could have wrote, I could have wrote or released a product or talked about making money or business, right. but the Holy Spirit said, This is what we will do. And He said it before I signed, I signed my book deal before I knew I was pregnant. Mm. I knew I was going to be pregnant with triplets. Right. Rashawn didn't know. And I was like, Can I still do this? So I wrote this book. I missed my deadline <laughs> multiple times, but I got my manuscript finished in January 2020. I'm pregnant with triplets at the age of 40. Doctors call this a high risk pregnancy. I called it high yield, high potential, high reward. I called that three name, three titles for that before I knew there was three babies in my belly. Okay. And, um, you know, the days that I had to stretch to believe beyond what the doctors were saying mm -hmm. and to believe bigger also means to believe beyond what you've been through, what you're going through, what things look like and what you think is actually impossible. So to now be a bone, not I was about to say what I used to say. I was a bonus mom when I was engaged before. Um, and that felt like that whole life was ripped away from me to now be a mom to three baby girls, healthy, who spent less than 48 hours in the NICU um, that have no signs of being born six, six weeks early that are, uh, making me need to lift weights because they're chunky and <laughs> just, love just that baby. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's like the, the, the fullness of, um, so there's an acronym that just came to me when you said fat and it was, I'll just say it to be released in the moment, just, um, fully anointed and touched. Mm, like that. when God touches us, it's just so much. And to have this experience and then to somehow release a book when I'm just trying to, we're just still trying to find our rhythm. Mm -hmm. um, my prayer and what's happened and how fast this is sold, it's not me. Um, it's never been me. And the way that people are saying these journal prompts are really messing them up and the lessons are really messing them up. I have been able to just take a step back and say, you know, Lord, just continue to kiss and breathe upon this yeah. because the next decade is going to look very different for some people, not because of me, but because they chose to give God a hundred days of devotion yeah. and to listen to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is not something we should be afraid of. The reason why so many churches don't talk about it anymore is because it's unpredictable, right. but that's everything that this next decade should be. The only thing you should predict is for God to be unpredictable, but because he's for you, it's going to build and take you, I believe, into a promised land that you didn't even know was possible for you, right. but it's waiting for you. I agree. I agree. So I was on day 26 today. Day 20. Oh, day 26, like the group. <laughs> so uh, this is the first day where I think I underlined the whole entire message. The, the mm, whole, this is, you are a message. Every, I mean, I, every day, Marshawn, there's something underlined in here. I remember I sent you that text about the one mm -hmm. girl, the, you knocked the win out of me with that one. Like, but today, I think everything I underlined and, yeah. and 
as I look back at it, I think the, the sentence that speaks to me the most is you are the carrier of a unique message from heaven that only your life experiences and abilities can convey. Oh, I see it. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. Sometimes I, I, I wrote well, on this. Because it much. wasn't you that was writing it. You were merely the vessel. You, you were not the author of this. You were the conduit through which the words came. And that's why, because it's, you can tell that this is not man's words. Mm, thank you. The eloquence and flow in which these words are on these pages, like I could tell it's the Holy Spirit. Mm. And yes, I mean, I am definitely in tune to the Holy Spirit. And as you know, as we say, try the spirit by the spirit, but it is obvious. And this is why it's sold out a, a year's worth of books sold out in two weeks, because Right now, more than ever, we need this. Last September, God gave me three words, next level everything. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. where do you want to get that? He's like, well, you just sit on it and I'll tell you what it means. And then he told me, so that was September. Then, then December, he said, I will let them live on whatever level they settle for. I was like, God, who are you talking about? I know, right? He's like, people, entrepreneurs, you're called to entrepreneurs. I called you to the marketplace. And I went on this crusade to help people to know that wherever they are right now is the place that they've settled for. God is a gentleman. He's not going to usurp his will on you. He's already given you all of the, the promises and the fortitude with which to create. He gave you that before your dad's sperm and your mom's egg came to be. That's what knowing and appro- approving you means, right? Mm-hmm. He's not going to usurp his will. And so wherever we have decided to be is where he will let us live. But the the beautiful thing about believing bigger is that when we have courage enough to shift our level and backing it up in full surrender, this hundred day journey that you're inviting people to take to get to know God for real. I'm not talking about religious God, Mm -hmm. right? I'm talking about leaving religiosity behind But getting to know God in his fullness, getting to know his spirit, getting to know his son, all in fullness, each of them with a different purpose and intention in your life, Mm. the only thing that comes out of that is bigger. There's no way, and I'm speaking for everyone who hears this episode, I'm speaking, I'm decreeing and declaring over you right now that there's no way you will be the same as you were on, on day zero as you will be on day 100. If you allow your spirit to go through this book, that's why you're messing people up with the prompts. Mm. Because your spirit is connecting with their spirit and they have come to this process open. So when God said, one day you will change the lives of people, this is the day, this is the beginning of the day. I mean, you're only just starting. You're not anywhere near done. But this starts with this work right here and your obedience in your season of big things being done through you right? Without going into the whole journey in the story, that's for us. But knowing that you knew, even when they said, maybe not, you mm-hmm. knew that the possibility existed. That possibility was enough for God to be able to keep the promise that he made to you and to use you to be an example of what's possible when you allow for all that you are to be all that he is and you do it unabashedly. So I celebrate and salute you, Marshawn. I am, I'm grateful for your journey as, as the old mothers of the church used to say, (laughs) don't take nothing for your journey because it was all purposeful. It is all what got you to this place now where you can sit from the seat of God for dense and declare what it is that you know because you lived it, which is why so many people, their lives are being transformed by you. And I'm grateful to, to know you in this season and to be able to see this. I love watching you. I love watching you shine when you ain't even trying to shine. Can I just say that? I love it. It, it brings me so much joy. It gets me so excited because I know that God is no respecter of persons. And... It is all possible when you said, when we have courage and that it's not going to require more clarity in this season, it's going to require more courage in this season. And if, if we, we all, the collective would be courageous enough to Mm -hmm. start living our eternal impact, Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> then our bigger belief will open us up to truly shake the planet. And that's what I'm excited about. And so I'm grateful for like, <laughs> oh my God. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for all of this. I'm here for all of it. I love to see it. I know that I, I just keep thinking about um, he who has begun a good work shall complete it into the return of Jesus. And he has begun a good work. Um, and, and I, I just know that this is just the beginning and you will not, I'm thinking about David and Psalm saying, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed begging bread. And I know that you will not, you, you can continue to rest and take whatever amount of time you want to take for the girls Mm -hmm. and you will be sustained. Actually, you will probably do more. I I keep hearing more. I I hear that more is coming. The more you focus on what needs your attention right now, because you've done the work and because you've shown yourself worthy of knowing who you are, that Genesis 1 and 26, believing and knowing that you were created in his image and likeness. And because you were, you are. And just as you said earlier, the ability to be it. You don't have to try it. You just are it and you are fully steeped in it. And that is why he's showing up bigger because you first believed it was even possible. And so I celebrate you. I salute you. Um, I'm grateful to know and know your, your journey and your story and to watch how it's all going to unfold because I know so many people's lives have been changed, are being changed and will continue to be changed just because you said yes, even when you didn't want to say it. <laughs> when it wasn't easy to say it, you said yes. I feel so. I don't have any words right now. <laughs> um, God knows what I went through the last 48 hours for what you just said. Mm. And when you're in a season, I'm like, God, this book, it just came out. How am I going to handle this? Mm-hmm. How am I going to help with my family? How am I going to do all of it, God? So um, I'm just so grateful because as women and the crab in the barrel mentality that we often has a, as black women, one of the reasons I needed a break for the five years was because I needed a break from a lot of my clients, uh-huh. the way that they, um, if they don't get the results that you have. These believers are the hardest group of people to work with on the planet. This is true. And um the way that I have some really great women in this season, but my relationship with black women in this space has not been that great all the time in terms of just a basic hello or acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. And so it just is such a, um, a refreshing um, moment for you to, um, I just want to tell you, so you're on day 26 and I'm on day 18 and it says authorized to impact Mm -hmm. and you use the word impact. You use the word rest. Um, and you know, it may not make sense to anybody else, but you know, when God is literally speaking directly from somebody Mm -hmm. and there are certain people I have that with, there's not that many friends in business that I do. Mm -hmm. So the last thing I want to say is that I see you. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I see you, I see you, I see you, and I'm excited for you about what's coming, Um, and I am inspired to a new level of womanhood Mm -hmm. in continuing and striving to be the type of woman that you just were to me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that I did put on some lashes. (laughs) I think people should see see some at least some of this conversation if you choose to, but I think um there's not a lot of images of of I think what just happened. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I thank you. I appreciate you and I see you. I hope you understand what I mean when I say I see mm-hmm. you. I do. I entirely do. I entirely do. Normally when we uh close out an episode, I ask three questions. Uh-huh. Um, and so the first question, are you ready? 
Okay. <laughs> it's not, no, it's not. Okay, I'm ready. No, no, it's not. <laughs> First question is, what is your favorite quote? Mm, uh, my favorite quote is, oh, there's two right now. Um, they're, 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 they're twins. One is, um, if, let's see. If you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much space. Uh-huh. That was my sports business was called Edge 3M Sports Entertainment. So that's been a mantra of mine for 20 years. And then the one that's kind of my favorite quote right now is what you believe you build, what you doubt you delay. Ooh. And I'm one of those people who likes her own words. And so my favorite quotes are by me. Uh-huh. <laughs> me too. I'm working on a, a perpetual calendar of Darnellisms. And so it took me a couple of years to get 365 and now I have 700. <laughs> so I'm just like, they just flow out of me now, like, which is, I think is great. All right. Second question is outside of your book, what's the last book that you read? So I knew I was writing this book I feel like it may have been this book called The Illusion of Money. It's not a Bible-based book at all. I don't always read Bible-based stuff. Um, I actually don't. Most of what I read is not. I have my Bible. I have that. But I think it's called The Illusion of Money. Um, It was before. Everything feels like it was before pregnancy and after pregnancy now. And you but, don't read when you're writing, right? Because I don't read I don't anybody's book. It's been a couple of years. Yeah. So when I'm writing, I don't want to infuse that. And I actually go back through my own journals and my own books and my own writings and listen to my own audio books because I need to stay in the authentic voice because right. we never absorb what other people are saying. So Absolutely. I haven't read anything this year. And probably it probably was two years ago that I read that book. Gotcha. And then the last question, and that is probably going to be really, really important for you right now, as you guys get into your new normal and find your rhythm, what is one tool that you swear by that helps to just give you the balance and things that you need for your business? Okay, so this is going to impact the mamas, interestingly. For me, like the one thing I can't live without is um, our pitcher that makes formula Mm-hmm. because we have to make it for three babies and we go through 30 bottles a day. So instead of pouring one bottle at a time, like one of the big, it was a $19 gift. It's like been the best thing that we've ever oh, had. Wow. And then you messed me up because you said for your business. So, um, <laughs> you know, one of my greatest appreciations is definitely for the ease of tech and automation. So I'm going to say email automation. Okay. Um, there's a story in Believe Bigger where there's a woman um, who was getting ready to, well, actually she was getting ready to commit suicide. And she came to one of my tour stops when I was hosting the Launch Your Dreams tour. And I was in Atlanta. Um, she waited for the 200 and some odd people to leave. And she, wait, she waited for everyone to be gone. It's just me and my team. She comes up in tears. And she's like, just the only word she could say is you changed my life today. I don't even know how to describe it. You changed my life. Now, I saw her six. I, I ended up hugging her, praying with her. My team stretches their hands. And she's gone. This is in 2000. And, 12, maybe, and um, maybe 13, 2012, 2013. So she um, sees me at another event about six months later. I don't remember her right away. Then she starts talking. I was like, I remember you. You waited till the very end. She goes, you know, when I told you that you changed my life, what I really meant is that you saved my life because the outfit I was wearing was what I had expected the police to find me in. Oh, my goodness. This park. And it was the first time I lived in Atlanta my whole life. And it was the first time that the gates to the park were closed. Mm -hmm. I looked over onto the passenger seat, she said, and next to the note that she had left for the police to give her family was her phone. And on her phone was an email from me that says, see you, see you shortly. So it was a, she remembered that she had purchased a $47 ticket, maybe 45, because we know we end things in odd numbers. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Ticket to the seminar, and she goes, Well, I don't have anything to lose, so let me just go there. And she said, She proceeded to tell me, she gave me a copy of a book that she wrote. She explained to me kind of what she had been through in her life that had taken her to that dark place. And she said, You know, for you to have talked about branding and marketing, but really what you were talking about was my voice and purpose and destiny. And this is one of the first times where I was really teaching the purpose map that's inside of Believe Bigger. And she said, you showed me what my life looked like. 
And I realized it didn't happen to me, it happened for me. And then she's told me about a business she started and a nonprofit. Wow. But you did all three of these things in six months. And she repeated back to me. She said, well, you told us that day that when you're alignment, when you're in alignment with your divine assignment, that everything accelerates. Mm -hmm. And so I thought about how guilty I had been made to feel through religiosity and not being accepted in a lot of traditional faith and church circles. The more I grew in Godfidence as a business, the less that I would get invited to speak at churches it was interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, how it the woman who's ambitious and business driven can be made to feel guilty for her ambition and for her actual calling of being a wealth builder mm -hmm. because it's not been sanctioned by women. They don't really, if someone tells you that they don't understand Proverbs 31, they right. have been taught poor teaching and they're teaching you poor thinking. Right. And so um, I thought, wow, all those years. And even just at that seminar, thinking about how many people are going to show up that day? How many people are going to come from that event to go to the next event? Are we going to have enough to pay whatever, all the numbers, all the stuff. Mm -hmm. And that moment of praying with that young woman and for her to be in that room was because of an email. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I, I always have an appreciation for email marketing, putting the jars out, giving people an opportunity to change their life. I do not teach business branding, marketing, and sales. I invite people into eternity. The metric I want to always be measured by is eternity impact. If it's the bridge is business, marketing, branding, sales, then that is the bridge. That's my assignment. It's my pulpit. It is as sacred. The Bible says that every good and perfect gift is from above. And um, if my gift is income generation, then that is no more sacred than the person who works at the altar because the altar is wherever we go, wherever God sends us is holy ground. And so, right. um, you know, and I'm not an email funnel builder. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I'm with you because I found out, I, I think I just accepted the prophetic anointing on my life just last year, probably. Mm. But I had probably for three or four years, several different prophets were like, God calls you a prophet for profit. So, and I'm like, mm, I don't like that. That sounds like I'm trying to pimp Jesus. I don't like that. And then eventually God was like, no, I've gifted you with the ability to see how people create wealth. Mm -hmm. And I need you to walk in that because there are people who are coming to you to learn how to create the wealth that I gave them in Deuteronomy. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, that's what you meant. <laughs> okay, I guess I could do that. But I, yeah, it's, and it is, you're right. People want to make us feel bad. Like someone said to me, they, I made a video or something and they commented on it. You're always talking about money. <laughs> yes, I am. So is the rest of the world. <laughs> right, exactly. And it's my gift. And the reason why you're bothered by it is because you have insecurities around it. But don't mistake my confidence for arrogance because you're insecure. Like that doesn't have anything to do with me. And I'm not going to let my light shine just because you're uncomfortable by it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that, you know, that's there's that courage again that that yeah. comes into this to make sure. OK, we better stop because we'll be talking for like <laughs> It'll be like a retreat at a certain point. Like, this is going on and on and on. <laughs> But that's part of the the fat. What did we say? What did I say? Fully anointed? fully anointed and talented and touched and touched. Okay. Well, I just appreciate you inviting me to to share with your audience, to invite me into your space, and I'm just so appreciative. And I'm really grateful for those of you who still feel like you're in a season where you're about to step into something new, and it feels scary. You know, when I started in 2010, there wasn't anyone visibly that was doing faith in business. It was incredibly isolating, incredibly lonely. It's also part of where my tears come from is it's not as lonely now. And I have to remind myself it doesn't have to be. Yeah. Because it was for so long. There's so many people who believe in all these other spiritual practices that are not Christ, Bible, or Holy Spirit centered. And that is not what this last decade, and then this is not that I'm not speaking to me, but this is my experience. This is my belief that I want you to receive this as well. Your last decade is not this decade. My, my friend, Michelle McKinney Hammond told me once when I was considering a decision, she goes, well, what happened then is not about to happen now. Yeah. This is not that. What was then is not what is coming. And what is coming is better. It's big, B-I-G, it's built in God. It's, there's certain things that God has already made that he can only make, and it takes courage for us to enter into it. You don't have to do these things alone. Gather in community, get your hands on 100 Days of Believe Bigger. Don't just get it for yourself. Yeah. If you have a desire to lead other women, this could be a great opportunity for you just to practice. I believe when you spiritually build up 
the lives of other women, the way that that will overflow into your business is beyond your actual belief. It has been my experience. And it's also my expectation for this next decade, because God knows the infinity pool that I'm, that I'm, that I'm looking for. <laughs> right. I know that. He gave me that desire. And so I'm not rushing to the infinity pool. I'm rushing to eternity. And then I want to see what, what that pool looks like. It's probably bigger than even what I've dreamed. Absolutely. It has to be. I mean, that's what the word says, right? That's like me. This decade is about next level, everything, everything to the next level. The more you lean into him, the more he pours out onto you. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm about to go hire my next level uh, staff member. I've got a few interviews coming oh, and they're cool. at the final round. So uh, I think I'm ready. I think I am full and ready <laughs> for that. But thank you so much for having me and God bless you. My pleasure. Okay, I told you, I told you. Like, did you get up and jump around your office? Like, were you shouting? Did you have to pull your car over in order to be able to get it in based on the amazing things that Marshawn had to share? Okay, here are some of my other favorite things that she said. She said, it's time to shift from beggar prayers to bigger prayers. Did that smack you in your head? Like, I mean, did she snatch your edges? Did she come for the way that you have been showing up consistently and you think that you have been creating a space for God to move through you, but you really have it. The other thing she said is she said, if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much space. Oh, y'all, I know you just got so many powerful nuggets as she jumped into this. Um, it is, it, it, I, I'm still at a loss for words, really, even though I've now listened to this episode so many times. So I hope that your spirit was as peaked in you know, excited. I hope it leapt as much as mine did. There are so many powerful things that she shared, right? You have to make sure that you are ready to be used fully by God. When she said that God starts when you do, <laughs> right? I mean, that's a whole new play on faith without works is dead. And I loved when she talked about not focusing in on clarity, but instead focusing in on having courage. And then she throws, she's like me, she loves acronyms. So when she talked about being big, built in God, again, another moment when my spirit just completely left. God won't let you bring your Egypt into your promised land. Did that get, did that get you the way that it got me? Like I could just go on and on and on about the amazing things that we talked about in this very long interview. You, I know you were blessed if you listened all the way up until the end. So if you enjoyed our conversation and you want to connect directly with Marshawn, you want to make sure that you check out the show notes where we'll share a link to her website and so you can learn all about what it is that uh, she's up to in the world right now. I'm just so excited that you had an opportunity to be blessed by this powerful, powerful businesswoman of God, this marketplace minister who is doing big things in the world. And I just know that your life is so much better because of it. I'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you for joining me for the Leverage Your Incredible Factor Business Podcast. If after listening to this episode, you know that it's time that you stop playing and praying small, you should go grab my Grow Your Business Toolkit. Based on the pillars of business optimization, this toolkit is the only resource you need to get crystal clear about what it will take to take your business to the seven-figure mark. Go grab yours today at growyourbiztoolkit.com. And if you enjoyed our time together, do yourself a favor. Head on over to iTunes, subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Until next time. Remember, you deserve to scale your business, shake the planet, and fund the life you crave. Take care.